to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a little bit of the process that I use when I start planning for my homeschool year. So I just finalized my bucket planning system. I finally was able to get it on the website. And I just wanted to share with y'all, this was the heart behind my entire website. So four years ago, I was sitting down, we were out camping and I was reflecting on our homeschool and I had this brand new planner that I had purchased and it was really expensive, but really beautiful. And I remember sitting down and just seeing all these empty pages of month after month after month and week after week and not having any place to, to start. I didn't know where to start. I was like, okay, do I start with math? Do I start with reading? You know, where do I start? And that got me really reflecting on, do I really want to start with curriculum and let that curriculum drive every decision I make? Or do I want to take back some of that control? Because what I found time and time again was that when I just went and start, started buying all these curricula, then I became a slave to it. I felt like I had to do it on a certain day because we had to finish by that certain time. And when I saw these other great opportunities arise, like a field trip that came out of nowhere, or a nature walk, or an opportunity to bless someone through ministry, it was harder for me to do those things because I wanted to keep up with the curriculum. And so that particular year, I said, okay, no more. I wanna be flexible. If I hear this great book that I wanna read with my kids, I'm just gonna read it. And I'm not gonna worry about the five books that I'm supposed to read because this curriculum said I was supposed to read it. I wanted to be able to explore the best because I've started seeing by that point, I started seeing, you know, just how short this time was with my kids. And I didn't wanna waste it trudging through curriculum or trudging through someone else's idea of a homeschool. I wanted to create our own. And so that started with much prayer. And as I prayed more, and as I really just dove into the word, I started seeing that the things that I believed were important were not the things that I was actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm sure some parts of the curriculum fell into those, into those pieces, but for the most part, I was following someone else's vision for my homeschool. So I created this little vision planning workbook. It's about five to 10 pages. And it took me through that process of reflecting on what is most important? Where do I wanna end up? Where do I hope our kids will end up? How do I want them to remember this time that we have together? What kind of a homeschool mom do I want to be? And how do I want them to rem remember me? Um, what do I want our homeschool to sound like or look like? So there are a number of questions. I put those in there and those helped me develop our homeschool mission statement. And so that's something that I come to every single year. I just come back, I read it, I remind myself of why we're doing this. When times get hard, I come back to the main purpose, our main vision for it all. In this little workbook, I also have a prayer for our family and for our homeschool. So that's something I share with you in um, that particular component. After the vision, then we have the big picture. And this was something that was lacking. And so that is why I felt the need to follow blindly whatever the curriculum company said to do. Because I felt like if I didn't do what they said, then I would have gaps. And I would create these gaps that I may never ever be able to fill. And then I started noticing as I studied different curriculum options, as I studied specific standards, as I looked back through my work when I was an educational consultant and curriculum writer, I started seeing the, the indicators, the objectives, and I started looking at those and saying, wait a minute, it doesn't take 12 years to teach parts of speech. I can do that in one or two years. It doesn't take 12 years to teach capitalization rules. So what if I just laid out the, this big picture of all these objectives. And then each year I just went in there and started picking and choosing what exactly I wanted to cover that particular year. And then I can choose curriculum that best fits that need. So I can pick um, an entire curriculum set or I can kind of dive in or I can just use books to teach those things, whatever pieces I wanna plug in at that point. So that became my big picture and I did this all the way through for discipleship. I created nine key buckets. And so these were common threads that I found um, 
in the different school systems and so forth. And I plugged them in here to support other homeschoolers that went through this process with a number of indicators next to it. So this is to provide that inspiration. So for discipleship, what does that look like? What are some things that you can be doing to disciple your children and shepherd their hearts? Well, it says, I love God and others. I pray each day. I read my Bible and memorize scriptures. I sing hymns and songs of praise. I engage with Bible devotionals. And so all that's listed here. And then on the other side where it says resources, that's my holding tank. That is where I just started listing ideas, books, devotionals, um, certain hymns that I wanted to share or a book, you know, hymns on, books on hymns. Um, and then I had this little tracking area where I could note how many times we've covered that, if we've mastered it. Obviously the discipleship, this would be ongoing. So it's just things that I'm being intentional about. But I did that for each of the nine buckets. And then I also had some extra buckets like this where I just got to list the specific hymns that I wanted to sing with my children along with specific devotionals and anything that just needed to be fleshed out a little bit more. Um, when I got to things like reading and language arts, well, those were my main areas. So I was able to create a specific checklist here. So I have like deeper reading strategies, and literary elements and text structures and so forth. And so this is a tool where I can track my individual children's progress. So for reading, writing, and math, those are areas that regardless of what the Lord calls them to, it is my responsibility to equip them and to prepare them so that they will be ready. And so this allows me to track their progress um, to not feel, again, enslaved to a curriculum. I can just jump on here and say, okay, have we done this? Have we not covered this? What is the best way to teach that? So basically it gives me the what, and then I can decide on the how. And that could be a video, that could be a class, that could be a co-op class, that could be a curriculum workbook and so forth. So I did the same thing for grammar, along with the mechanics of grammar. So just put it all on here, it took literally two pages. And that's it. We can cover this in a year, half a year, maybe a couple years if we want to repeat it all the way through. But this way I can track that and I can move forward and not worry so much. Did the same thing for math and social studies and history. We added on things like PE and health, life skills, creative arts. So all of that goes in here, all of my banks of ideas as I'm on the internet, as I come across a great um, curriculum, maybe at a vendor um, exhibition hall, I just jump, I put them all in here. I plug them in and I leave them in here. This is my big picture planning and that just goes on my shelf. And then at the beginning of every school year, I come back in here. I will say this has saved me a lot of money because I'm not as impulsive. I don't have to just buy this or buy that. I just plug it in and then when it's time for it, then I can say, is that really the best fit or have I found something a little bit better by that point? But basically when I come back to my yearling planning, I go back to the front, so discipleship. And so for my yearly planning, I have this form that just kind of has a two part system there. And at the top, I just jot down the indicators I wanna focus on this year. And at the bottom, I plug in our resources that I wanna use. So I'll pull some of my favorites from here or any others that I found along the way that I wanna make sure to target. So I do that for social studies and history, science, PE, health, creative arts, and life skills. And that's kind of the group stuff. And then I do that individually for each child for reading, writing, and math. So once I have my yearly plan, then I just pull from these buckets and I flesh it out each term. I like to plan at the beginning of each month. That way I can be really intentional about any seasonal um, activities, events that are taking place locally, um, ideas, things that we wanna do, for example, for November, for Thanksgiving. And so I have a planning form with all 12 months on them and I just plug in some key ideas. So when we get to that month, I start there. And then once again, I pull in my nine buckets. What are we looking at this particular month? And then um, when it comes time for weekly planning, either I just use that as a checklist or I pull it and I flush it out even further, day one, day two, day three, day four, and so forth. So 
the system itself is um, very comprehensive. It's very custom. It's something that I can use, you know, a short form or a long form for the same thing. Sometimes all I wanna do is leave this blank and then look for the opportunities in everyday life. And then I write them in afterwards for science. We went on a nature walk and we found frogs and we learned about their habitats and we learned about their diet. And then for um, geography, we looked at a map and we did some map work with our map planning sheets. For discipleship, we took someone a meal, we ministered unto others, we prayed together and just looking for those opportunities and plugging them in. And so these forms, uh, this bucket planning system really allows for a number of different styles and philosophies and ideas to come together to support someone's common vision for their homeschool. So that's just a sneak peek. I'll be doing more of a page by page flip through hopefully later on, but I just wanted to share that with you because right now I'm looking at my yearly plan and I'm so excited because I have all these great ideas to start with. And I just realized that I need to make sure to do this before I start the school year because it really opened my eyes to what kind of a year we wanna have, what kinds of things I wanna do with the kids. And it reminds me of what is most important and why we're doing this. So getting to the heart of our homeschool is what truly makes it meaningful. And I hope that'll do it. It'll do that for you as well. So check out my bucket planning system. If you're interested in learning more, come visit Nurturing Connections Homeschool for a number of other resources and encouragement. Mm -hmm.